Institute for Faith and Freedom at Grove City College presents Liberty Mail with the Student Fellows of Faith and Freedom. Hey guys, welcome to our first episode of Liberty Mail with the Institute for Faith and Freedom. I'm Libby Krieger. And I'm Aaron Jenks. And we'll be delivering to you the top conservative wins of the week. We're actually coming to you from the underground studio here at Grove City College. Super excited about this year. Uh, We'll be putting out a lot of content on YouTube, Spotify. We recently just did our Man on the Street video, Libby and I. Yes, we did. Had a lot of fun uh, interviewing students at Grove City College. We'll be doing some more coming up, too, so watch out for those. Exactly. We'll be uh, trying to hit some local colleges, maybe Slippery Rock, and then maybe throughout the semester bounce around to some conferences. Mm -hmm. And we're really excited about those videos. Those are fun. We're going to try to get them out on TikTok and maybe go viral. Who knows? Yeah, we'll see. And I know we're trying to do this a lot because focusing on the conservative wins, because what you see in the media, the mainstream media, is a really negative view of conservatism. Um, All the places that we're losing, and yes, those need to be talked about, but what we want to do is talk about the areas where you can put your hope and get excited about for the future of the conservative movement. Absolutely. And by doing that, I think we're going to almost redefine what the common definition of conservatism is, if we can really reach people, which, uh, which is the goal. Yeah. Yeah, so as please we, share as this we, podcast with your friends. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was, as we uh, were doing our Man on the Street videos, people just didn't, some people did not know what conservatism was, even if they call themselves a conservative. Yeah, definitely. So, well, getting into the <laughs> first topic, it actually kind of starts with a loss. So President Joe Biden, uh, recently through his OSHA mandate, is telling private companies with over 100 employees that they have to mandate their employees to get the COVID-19 vaccine. So that's not the win we're talking about. The win is that 27 states vowed to fight this vaccine mandate. So whether that was through the Republican governors and I think most instances um, or some attorney generals in a few states. In the one state of Kentucky, yeah, the attorney general reached back and vowed to fight against, uh, I think because it's a Democratic governor, but but he he vowed to take the fight as Mm -hmm. most of the governors and Republican states are doing. Yeah, and I know there's, I think this is a really good indication that over half of the states here are are pushing back against this. I know Ron DeSantis in Florida has been very vocal. He's been at the forefront of this battle, um, yeah, hitting back. Yeah, definitely at least the most new, uh, media coverage, but mm-hmm. yeah. Definitely. And I know right now he's using his political power in Florida. He's finding counties and cities that uh, have vaccine mandates for whether it's the private companies or the local government. If they do this, they will be fined $5,000 for each um, each person that they do. So it's really good deterrence for these companies not to implement implement the vaccine mandates. Absolutely. It's almost like a, a dip into the their funding. Mm-hmm. And then you know how much schools love their funding. So they definitely do. Yes, <laughs> they're going to fight back on that one. <laughs> and something else is the majority of Americans I saw from this one poll uh, believe it to be an unconstitutional overreach of federal power. And I know you had a few more polls that you were looking at. Yeah, it's really interesting because uh, what uh, published that poll? Uh, that was I saw it on the center square. I'm not exactly sure what the center square, um, the polling location or company was. Yeah, well, it's interesting because I was looking at Axios poll mm-hmm. and then a Politico poll, and those two polls were getting u- used on a variety of uh, media outlets. I think CNN did a piece and uh, CBS did a piece. Mm-hmm. And so, but they were using their polling, and it said that 60% of uh, Americans were in favor, in fact, of the vaccine mandate. <laughs> but then after I did, I think, five minutes of just research into this poll, I wanted to see the numbers and look at the data sets. Um, 1,057 people. So not quite representative of the country. Not at all. No. Like, but you know, what's a good I... number for that? Like, maybe get, like, 50,000 for a, a population of, what, 320 million people? You know, I'm no polling expert, but that sounds better than 1,000. <laughs> definitely, for sure. So that was a little... Uh, it's always frustrating when you see the kind of numbers like that, and then that's the story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, and each, out there. each media outlet takes it from the other, and they keep going mm-hmm. and going and on this narrative without then, doing the five minutes of research that you did. Yep, and then they just cite each other uh-huh. as almost, oh, this is enough uh, criteria. Mm-hmm. Look, we cited CNN, I cited Axios. We're, we're good, we're good. And I think in a lot of cases, the average reader looks at that and they say, oh, yeah, that, that looks... Uh, that, that makes looks sense. good to me. I mean, people are busy. You're not going to always have the time to research, oh, what's the sample size mm-hmm. of this poll? Did they have enough um, blinding in this this process, you know, to make it an accurate poll? No one's going to look at that. So yeah. you're just going to look at what the story says. And that's why it's so important to have credibility in this. Yeah. 
And that kind of goes along with the purpose of the show with Liberty Mail. We're going to deliver some wins mm-hmm. for conservatism. But as we talk about these topics, we're going to shed some light on the media stories that is currently going and the facts behind them. Definitely. And something that hasn't really been brought up by most mainstream outlets is how unprecedented this vaccine mandate, yes, Biden is not pushing it on all Americans technically because it's not a mandate on the citizenry, uh, the general public, but it's still essentially doing so by use, strong arming private companies to do the job for them. Um, and even Dr. Fauci just about a year ago admitted that you can't force people to get the vaccine. They have a right to refuse a vaccine is, and I quote, they have a right to refuse a vaccine. You cannot force someone to take a vaccine. Uh, so maybe they're saying this is not technically forcing them, but in reality, it is. You know, I have some friends who have dads who work in uh, government mm. at the federal level, and there's no opt out option. So their option is to get the vaccine, even if they don't want it or quit or quit. Yeah. And whenever you have a family that you have to provide for, what are they going to do there? It's not just that easy to quit and get a a good paying job. Yeah. And what some of these people could, could leave and be fine and maybe live for a while mm-hmm. or uh, take some government paychecks in them and just yeah. get by. But then uh, but this maybe is a very what, real problem. Yeah. There's two in 10 people maybe. And then the majority of Americans are going to, if they quit, they're going to be, <laughs> they're going to be struggling. They're going to be struggling mm-hmm. to pay for their food, put food on the table. Well, especially, I mean, prices have gone up. Gas has gone up. It's not exactly the economy you want to lose your job in, especially for something like a vaccine that you are being forced to get that is pretty new. Yeah, the ramifications of the forcing with the 100 people OSHA mandate is just, it's ridiculous. I was thinking about it. Uh, if a company has around 100 employees, let's say they have 108 employees, I thought one report, mm-hmm. what's that employer going to do? Are they going to fire nine people to get under and then not mandate it? Are they going to mandate it and then 10 people leave the job mm-hmm. and try to go find a different job? It well, is these are the be a unintended story. consequences. Yep. Yeah, and you'd think that they'd think about this. Uh, I, I mean, the government would think about this as they're like, okay, what is the unforeseen mm-hmm. uh, implications of this policy? What are people going to do? But it seems they're very surface level of what mm-hmm. they want. See, that's one perspective. Maybe the other is that they do think this through and they just don't care. Mm-hmm. Because who's this going to impact? This isn't going to impact their their side. This is impacting conservatives for the most part. Yeah. You know, that's a that's a broad statement, but... Largely, this is not going to impact their base, and they know that, so they don't care, in my opinion. Um, But something else that I think we should touch on on this is where we might have a little bit of a disagreement. I know conservatives kind of fall into both sides on this, uh, but what do you think? Should private businesses be able to mandate the vaccine for their employees? So I have one professor that every answer, it depends. But (laughs) now I I love saying that, so it it really depends, but... Give me something more. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, no, I'll play more on it, but... So the federal mandate against, but you asked about the private industry. Um, it's really gray area with healthcare coming mm-hmm. into play. But majority of the time, I feel like the private company should be able to. And we, we let almost how ha- conservatives want the states to have a more mm-hmm. uh, stronger role in policy. I would like the, the private business to have more of a role in saying what their employees should do than yeah. the government pushing it on them. So, so you take the free market stance? Um, I don't know. It depends. But sometimes <laughs> the free market, I think, it obviously doesn't work out. And that's where I like to have federal government maybe play some checks in. And that's where I disagree with some of my conservative uh, comrades. <laughs> Allies, perhaps? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Comrades is the wrong word. No. <laughs> no, this isn't communism, comrade. Yikes. <laughs> um, okay. But so to go on that point, free market. I I know, I understand the argument. You think it's a free market. Private businesses have the right to do what they want to tell their employees, Mm -hmm. you know, this is what you have to do. They don't have to work for them if the employee doesn't want to abide by those terms. See, I don't, I don't agree with that. I don't think private companies should be able to mandate this vaccine. And I think we have, we should apply the principle of prudence in saying, this is not about, this is not a statement on the vaccine's effectiveness at all. This is, it's still a, a new thing that some people don't want to do. And knowing how this works out with once one, these big companies start having their employees be vaccinated, requiring it, mm. you're going to have everyone virtue signaling every other company 
virtually every other company doing so too to fit along with the mainstream progressive narrative. And that's what we would see, in my opinion. And we are going to have millions of Americans, thousands, millions, uh, be completely ostracized from society if they don't want to. So once you start allowing these companies to do so, I think it's just a slippery slope till essentially everyone is doing so. And you have, again, no choice of getting the vaccine and providing for your family. Um, And that's why I think what Ron DeSantis is doing in Florida, using that political power to say, no, you can't do this or I will fine you. I think that is a really good step. Um, Well, let me stop. I I love what you said about prudence, because right now when I look at this topic, um, I feel like I don't have a a fully formed opinion yet. mm -hmm. I'm like sitting on the wall. But then you say prudence. I don't know if a lot of you are or a lot of our viewers know, but in my mind, I know in your mind, mm-hmm. that's almost hand in hand with conservatism mm-hmm. is prudence. And then looking at the... It wasn't that Russell Kirk or Russell Edmund Kirk, Burke. yeah. And then we're looking at this uh, warehouse of knowledge from the past mm-hmm. that we learned from. And this is our prudence that we, we okay, we're going to make changes, but we know what works and we're going to stand by what works and not change it too fast. So... When I think about that and prudence, I'm like, okay, I've seen the way that... Uh, Am I persuading you any bit? You were persuading me a little. You got me to hop off the fence real quick. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll go even further with the free market because I know that's a huge point among conservatives. And again, it is a persuasive argument. But I think the, the place that we go wrong is we see free markets as an end in itself. But as conservatives, we should see it as a means to an end of ordered liberty, prudence, prosperity, and liberty. Um, and... If the free market is not allowing for us to have those things, liberty, then is it really the best means to that end? Mm. Uh, So looking at it prudentially, I think you have to say, uh, will this in reality do what we want it to do, which is provide liberty for Americans? And I don't think it would, um, considering how we've seen that. For example, big tech. We talked about this before. If if you don't like it, build your own. How did that work for Parler? Yep. And it probably didn't. got shut down. Yeah, because the the mainstream the is so powerful and so progressive. It's very one-sided that any dissent is basically squashed, whether it's by the government or by big tech or by these big businesses. Mm-hmm. If you dissent, you're, you're dead. Yeah, the biggest difference I see in all of this is that uh, we're – like parlor, we're talking about businesses interacting mm-hmm. with other businesses, but now we're talking about with the vaccine mandate, uh, the interaction of employees and businesses. So I feel like the employees hold a little bit more power, and almost we've seen that in uh, throughout the 20th century with labor unions and pushing back against mm-hmm. uh, corporations. Now, it, it's really hard for me to just to give that freedom to uh, the private business to implement Mm -hmm. these kind of things. But in every other situation, I'm thinking, okay, I want the private business to be in control. It's, Mm -hmm. it's, it's that entrepreneur started that business, that small local business of 108 people. Let, let him or her do what what they please with their business. Now, when we're going to talk about uh, implementing (laughs) that person's rationale of uh, a vaccine or a healthcare decision, Mm -hmm. Definitely gray area, and mm-hmm. I'm not a fan of that. So I'll stand by that they should not mm-hmm. implement that. Okay, so I did persuade you. They should wow. not implement <laughs> the <laughs> That's vaccine very on them. But the reason I held back a little is because you ha- I have this one view that, okay, private business should be able to do everything. Mm-hmm. But then we get this one <laughs> situation where, oh, it depends now. Yeah. And now we don't want the private business coming into our bodies mm-hmm. and saying, even if our doctor, I've seen a lot of cases, says, no, you shouldn't get this vaccine. You just fought COVID. Your antibodies are high. Don't get the vaccine. And then, no, no, you have to get the vaccine. Mm-hmm. So that's definitely an issue. Yeah. And I think what exactly what you're saying, basically, to summarize, we shouldn't hold to the free market as a principle. Mm. We should we should utilize it, but not necessarily the end. But hold to this principle of prudence and discern whether it's this is the right thing for the situation with medical freedom. Um, like you said, maybe it's a little different in other circumstances with private businesses, but I think that's a really good point. Yeah, I think this ties into our next segment a little, is with uh, in Florida we have the mask mandate, mm. and this is specifically in schools, so we take it a little from private business to the schooling and so it's in charge. The state's in charge of the schooling in Florida, specifically. We're going to talk about, and Ra- uh, Ron DeSantis implemented a ban on mass mandates, which then got reversed by a local court. Hmm. And 
after that happened, now it went to an appeals court, and that appeals court said, no, DeSantis can implement his ban. So h- how do you think this applies with a-, a win for conservatism in liberty sense? Well, I think because Ron DeSantis here is fighting for the freedom of parents to decide what is best for their child. So if they want to send their children to school with masks, they have the right to do so. They have the power to do so. Uh, and this rule ruling still allows for that. By banning mask mandates, he is not imposing his view on any parents. He's just saying, you know your children the best. You know their medical history the best. These are your kids. We're not going to tell you what to do with them um, in, in this area. Uh, and I think it's a really good win for conservatism because it does allow uh, that liberty for parents to decide. And, you know, this will probably be challenged again in court. So we don't know what's happening with that in the future. But as as for now, I think it is a win. I definitely think it's a win as well. Um, when we have, <laughs> I'll say people going against, so whoever brought the lawsuit to uh, implement a mandate of mm-hmm. mask, do what you want for your own child. That, that is your personal freedom. But when you try to <laughs> implement your own opinions mm-hmm. onto other ki- children that's really dangerous and not even kids but when you try to change how other people are living like we were just talking about with the vaccine mm-hmm. it's not your area let it let it go and so good job for Rob DeSantis, Ron DeSantis he's yeah. doing the the fining now yeah. I think each school district almost it's like losing your funding mm-hmm. yeah, and he is using his political power as governor um, really coming at the forefront of this battle and I think a lot would many people would argue that he's probably the most base governor based, in the United based. States right now. So yes. he's really doing he's fighting against uh, Biden uh, in public too. you know, mm. someone I believe a reporter asked him if they if he had any words for Biden. And he he said, you know, my problem with him is he doesn't take responsibility. Uh, and he just he just blasted President Biden. So, you know, he's taking on this battle, not only on the policy, he blasted him on the policy of, of mask or vaccines. I think it was the fact that he said he would fix COVID and numbers okay. are up about 300% from what I saw. Yep. Um, and he's always in Ron DeSantis. What he said is he's always blaming it's another state or he's blaming Ron DeSantis for a lot of this. You know, the media is completely hopping on board too. you know, everything is about, oh, Ron DeSantis did this and this is the this many cases, blah, 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 always trying to connect the dots there um, and blast him on his COVID policy. Yeah, I don't know. Um, sorry, I was trying to get, I was trying to get a statement from Ron. I saw it earlier on this one piece out of. Uh, was Rutgers. it on what he said to Biden? Yeah, it was on that, and then it was further on the mass mandate. But I could not find where I was reading from it yesterday. Hmm. I know it tied right into it, but well, I know what he said um, on Twitter. He he tweeted that he will continue to fight for parents' rights. So that brings it back to what exactly Mm -hmm. he's doing this for. Um, And clearly, I'm sure there's some political motive, too. Yeah, he said he he restored the rights of the parents. Mm -hmm. That's how he views it. And I agree with him. I think that's a win for liberty. Win for conservatism, win for liberty. Absolutely. Go hand in hand. Yeah, and so that kind of ties into the the school mask mandates. But we saw in New York City just a few days ago. um, Which is awesome. Yeah. You're a New Yorker. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Go Yankees. But... (laughs) Even though sometimes we, st- we stink. Pirates stink more. Not fair. But <laughs> um, it's great being from New York and then seeing <laughs> the minority, as in conservatives, mm-hmm. in such a liberal state kind of push back on policies as the uh, de Blasio implemented with the vaccine mandate. And mm-hmm. so we have all these local teachers in New York City. I think they, they marched from the inner streets of Brooklyn across the Brooklyn Bridge. Mm-hmm. And this went on for, I think, uh, three or four hours. And were any of these protesters paid and bust in? And they were not. Wow, imagine that. cheers Imagine that. local constituents Actually, banding together, grassroots rising together to uh, protest what they do not like. You don't see that on the left. Well, maybe you do, but lots of them well, are busted. Yeah, in. we definitely do. But we're, where we're being a little playful is that a lot of these protests that we've seen in the past two years, um, they either have busted. The mm-hmm. reports come out that that on Facebook, out they're, of state they're reaching out like to out-of-state people. So. People that have no stake in the game coming in to, to bolster up their side. Yeah, so as we're making fun of them. But there are good <laughs> people that... <laughs> There are local people that want to make a difference, but yeah, definitely. the fact that we see them busting in is 
sketch. Yeah. Not based. <laughs> Not Cringe. based, no. So um, it's very based in New York City <laughs> when we have... The first time New York City has probably ever been based. Hey, watch out. Come on now. Maybe not that far. But I know that these teachers, so they're gathered in one of the most progressive cities in America. Mm. So that's a win in itself. Um, yeah. And also, you know, you already have the stereotype of teachers that are like, maybe a little more on the liberal side, but they're out here fighting. Even lots of them are vaccinated, they said, but they just don't want the mandate. I was just going to say, it's not even just super conservative mm-hmm. people coming out to protest because in the eyes of media, super conservatives, okay, anti or at least anti-COVID vaccine. Mm-hmm. But we have a lot of these people that came out in statements when they're getting interviewed saying, no, I'm vaxxed. I just don't think that the government has a role in implementing what my my neighbor does with their mm-hmm. body, and I don't want them to get vac- or don't want them to, to make the forced. decision to be forced to get yeah. vaccine. Yeah, because people should get vaccinated if they if they feel that is the right decision, not because Bill de Blasio or Joe Biden told them to. Absolutely. It's your personal health care. Do mm-hmm. it is <laughs> what you want to do is your personal liberty. And these teachers were directly impacted because uh, New York mayor or New York City mayor Bill de Blasio implemented a policy that Department of Education employees. So mm-hmm. directly impacting these teachers had to be vaccinated by September 27th. So. This is this is coming down the hatch really soon for these teachers, and they're standing up. I saw some uh, posters that said, I call the shots, you know, fun little play on yep. the vaccine. But I and think this is a really good indication of where much of America might be at. Yeah, and so I was looking at it from this perspective. Um, there's been a ton of data coming out in the past year about uh, – populations of who is vaccinated Mm -hmm. and we've seen that minorities in the sense of uh, black brown people of color are largely not vaccinated Mm -hmm. so in new york city when you have a large population (laughs) that are not vaccinated and then de blasio implements this mandate um (laughs) in a general sense we're talking about ed but when he implements this mandate let's whoever is in that area Mm -hmm. it affects them the most yeah and when the, when the left is constantly, or de Blasio, when he is constantly using rhetoric that supports people of minority status and then implements something like this going against their liberty, it's just highly hypocritical in my mind. Yeah, I mean, the left always talks about how they are the ones fighting for the minorities, mm-hmm. but they don't see the disparate impact that these policies mandating it are having on the people that they, they pledge to support. And we can sit here and talk like we're going to use this point. And while we still don't know, like it'd be great to get a poll in there and, and talk to these communities and see mm-hmm. what they want and then go to it. But de Blasio should have done that already. They, when they Before they implemented this policy, they should have done that. They should have gone to the local people, uh, any citizens, and asked them these questions. But they implemented it. So mm-hmm. while we're sitting here looking at it in hindsight, we're like, oh, they should have done this. Or it would be great to have that data because then we could really talk about it in uh, some facts and specific detail. <laughs> but they just they, – it's like they don't care, like you said earlier, mm-hmm. which I hate to think because more of an optimistic but – or an optimist. So you got the optimist and the pessimist over yes. here. I, I think that they they know this doesn't affect their people, so they don't care. Mm-hmm. Why would they? I mean, oh, it's a political me. game, and yeah. they're just trying to win it. So that's my, that's my stance. I hope not. But <laughs> you never know. And – didn't you mention, we were talking before the show, that you saw this only on like one or two outlets. You know, I saw, yeah, I the, saw it on Fox, mm-hmm. but you couldn't find it anywhere else. It wasn't anything. You, I mean, anytime I see a protest, I'm like, wow, great. That's awesome. Exercise your, 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 your right to constitutional assemble, right. First yeah. Amendment, absolutely. Yeah, like awesome. Go you. No matter who it is, on the left, on the right, middle, don't care. I love it. Mm-hmm. Um I feel like the media also s- takes that standpoint when they say, oh, we love this liberty of protesting. Until you're conservative. Okay, yeah. Put it on the news, please. Yeah. Show American people that, oh, okay, we actually have, uh, maybe they don't even define themselves as conservatives, mm-hmm. but we have these people protesting. Pushing back against the the mainstream, the elite, the establishment. Absolutely. All of it. And that should go hand in hand with what they've been talking about for the past year when we see BLM protests and they it's on the news cycle for two weeks Hmm. and it seems that more and more as we get into news cycles i've been like looking like it's in the news cycle for two days and then out or you have to go on page 20 of google search engine to find it you have to really dig to find these stories um you just don't see that with progressive Mm -hmm. protests and it also it would be one thing if these protesters in new york city uh 
I don't know if they got unruly and mm-hmm. started throwing bottles. At, like, well, a that local would be business. a front page story. It would. Yes, it would be conservatives. Blast, yeah, conservatives wreck local through. town, and mm-hmm. locals are upset. But we saw that probably happen in find the past. A, a story of someone who was at, impacted and pull on the heartstrings there because you know that's what they would do. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, this person owned this local corner store for 20 years, and now the glass is broken. Because of conservatives. Mm -hmm. So it's just so upsetting to see that the story spin off and Mm -hmm. the the bias come into play. The lack of coverage. Yes, and lack of coverage. And then the bias that comes into play with that, and they're like, it's it's not even like they're trying to hide it. It's just so out there. See, but the problem, I think... Lots of them see themselves as unbiased. They truly think that this is... I agree on that fact. I think so, too. Yeah. conservatives are the enemy, and they are doing what they can to further the good is what they see when it's just a different worldview. So mm-hmm. I think lots of them don't even see this as bias. They just think they're, it's, it's their truth, as they say. Yeah. And not to say I've, I definitely see conservatives do that or mm-hmm. conservative media do it. Um, in my opinion, it happens a little less frequently, mm-hmm. but it still definitely happens. Definitely. And... What I love what that we're doing here with Liberty Mail is I think we're we're going to be straight down the middle. We're going to push back on each other yeah. throughout this whole process, right? Well, that's my favorite part. Aaron. There we go. We're going to be based, <laughs> totally based, unique, all um, time, and, and we're not going to just feed one set of data mm-hmm. or or one set of a story, but we'll push back and give this other side of the story. Yeah. So we will keep delivering those conservative wins and Mm -hmm. whenever you won't see them probably in the mainstream media we are going to try to give those to you so thank you all for tuning in today to this episode our first episode really fun of liberty mail make sure you come back next week and subscribe to the podcast Uh, wherever you get your podcast leave us a review and please share with your friends also hit up our website at faithandfreedom.com um, for all of our newest content. We'll probably be doing some man on the streets here soon. Aaron, we're really excited about that. Yeah, we're really excited about that. So make sure you come back if you check out this video that we're keeping them short for uh, kids like us. You know, we <laughs> Lose like the them. attention span. Yeah, 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 exactly. But we're super excited to get st- to get going, get the man on the street videos going, uh, the podcast going, and delivering you Liberty Mail. Stay based. For more information on this podcast or other programs, please visit faithandfreedom.com.